Welcome to the Grow Your Business and Grow Your Wealth podcast with Gary Helt. Gary is an expert in helping business owners put together a plan that will provide a better future for their businesses, themselves, and their families. On the podcast, Gary interviews other professionals who share his vision, and together they share secrets and strategies any business owner can use to build a better financial foundation for your business and your life. Hey, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, this week, our guest is Rustin Yasibolian, and he is with uh, Massinian Diamonds. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Gary. I appreciate it. So, you know, why we have you on is uh, you are second generation um, business owner, um, you know, working with um, your dad in the business and, and taking things over and really want to talk to you. You know, what made you want to kind of continue in, in your dad's footsteps? It's actually uh, it's interesting, Gary. I never growing up, I never um, thought about myself taking over the family business. I mean. They've had it since 84. So they had it nine years before I was born. So I grew up in the business. I grew up, you know, took my first steps in the showroom. Um, I never really thought about it seriously until I got to college. And I was like, look, I don't know what I want to do. Um, you know, I, I when I first got into school, I was going in for, you know, a business degree. And then one of my buddies is like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm changing my degree to finance. And I was like, cool, I'll do that too. I have no idea what that is, but it sounds right. really good. Um, but then after, like... You know, we got into our junior year and he was, we were doing internships and he was doing an internship over, um, I forgot where it was, but he was just mentioning that like, he was like, dude, it's tough working for somebody. Like it's all the corporate red tape, the things that you have to deal with. Uh, he literally made it sound like a horror story. So I was like, okay, I don't want to do that. Right. This does not sound nice at all. Um, so I ended up like between classes, between like my Tuesday, Thursday class and Monday, Wednesday, Friday off. So I started helping out around the store. And um, it really started to grow on me just because of, uh, one, the, the amount of time and passion my parents put into it. And then two, it was just like, I realized that, you know, this allows me to be pretty creative, be my own boss. And, you know, you reap all the benefits. You're not, you're not working for somebody else. Um, so after school, I was like, okay, let me try this out. And ever since then, I've been there for the past eight years, nine years. Right. What, I mean, so, so what are some of the challenges? I mean, obviously, you know, it, and I'm going to say your, your, your dad's not that old because I'm not far from his age. Um, you know, from kind of the, the, the old school thought of the way things should be done as compared to, you know, your generation and the way that, did you feel things should be done? And so what are some of the challenges that you guys have, have run into? I think there's there can be a lot of challenges. Um, I think anyone that works in a family business can kind of you know speak to this too. It's um, one. I think one of the main challenges that people don't think about is like the family dynamic changes. Mm -hmm. um, in the sense that like you know you spend time with your family at your business and then you go home and then you guys start talking about business. So it's like that's what it becomes. It's not. It's not like hey, I haven't seen you in a week or two. How are you? How is how's life? Catching right. up. Like, catching up like, like that, um, it, the, just the family dynamic changes a little bit. Um, outside of that, it's like, you know, you're also working with your parents too and someone who's been in the industry a lot longer than you have. So you have to understand that, you know, these people, even though I might not understand at the moment or agree, but they've been doing it for much longer. So I do need to, you know, hold back a little bit and like take in everything that I'm seeing, take in everything that they're saying, because there is a lot of wisdom and experience in the stuff that they're mm -hmm. saying. Although like the younger generation, like myself, you know, you do have fresh ideas. You do have young ideas that you want to bring to the table. And a lot of the times they are, I mean, they work and they're right, but you just have to kind of like ease into how you're going to present that idea because um, being a family business or like your parents starting it, it's a little bit old school. So they're a little bit more reserved in the way they want to do things. Um, I think that would be the second biggest challenge. And the third biggest challenge I would say is, um, just the way that people perceive you when you say, I work in a family business or I took over my family business. Because right. everyone, you get the scrutiny of like, oh, that must be nice. Not yeah. knowing. Like, they don't understand like the amount of hard work you put on the back end. They just think like, you kind of take it and you coast. Um, but that's more, I mean, I don't think that's a huge difficulty, but it definitely comes with taking over the family business. Yeah. 
No, um, from a, a, a technology standpoint and things like that, what have you, um, I guess, what have you brought to the business from a, a, a new technology standpoint and what you're trying to do compared to, you know, the way your mom and dad have done stuff over the years? So in regards to technology, um, I think the data is very important. And I, and I realized that from all of these big corporations and all the right. data that the way my parents used to do it is classic, you know, pencil to pad, pen to paper, just the way invoices are written, the way, you know, inventory is taken. taken. Um, but when I came in, I introduced a new POS system and a new inventory system because although not only, I mean, not only does it make it more efficient, but it's also like I have the data of what inventory items are selling. I have an exact right. to the penny, like what my profit margins are you know, where we are in regards to dead inventory, stuff like that, because I think it broadens your vision on like, you know, what's actually going on. You work there and you're there every single day. Of course, you have an idea of what's going on versus like actually having hard, hard numbers of like, you know, this item's been sitting in inventory for 18 months. We right. should probably buy another and do something with it. Yeah, I think that, I think lots of times, you know, uh, uh, you know, again, to me, dad is king also, um, you know, and it's, it's one of those things and you can think about, oh, well, how long have we had, like you're saying, how long have we had this one thing in inventory? Um, and if you have to go back digging through paper invoices to figure that out, you know, it definitely, you know, definitely takes more time. Um, I think that kind of, I'm going to even say like your reorder points and stuff like that, if you have it, electronically i'm sure that makes your life a lot easier too oh yeah i mean absolutely it's um for me it's about efficiency because the way we were doing like even just checking inventory we have like hundreds of items in inventory right. so doing that would take a week and a half now it's just you know it takes two days yeah it's just saving a lot of time yeah what um, from a uh, you know I'm gonna say social media standpoint and things like that. What have you what have you brought to the family business from that standpoint that wasn't there before? Honestly, Gary, I'm still wrestling with that today. So I think social media is the hardest monster to try and tame. Um, yeah. And of course, our social media we put a lot of time into it. I've hired a social media manager because um, I think it is really important for at least brand imaging. Um, because like once you can showcase to the world, this is what my company is, this is what my brand does, you can use that leveraging in different ways. Um, but in regards to social media, I think it's really important to, I would say advertising there is probably a lot more efficient. You get a higher ROI than like print advertising. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you have 150 million people, daily users on Instagram scrolling through their phones. I don't remember the last time I picked up a magazine. Um, right. So it's just like social media is a very strong tool if you learn how to use it correctly. And I'm still trying to learn. And yeah. I'm 30. So right, right. So my father, it's like, you know, forget about it. Right. Now, do, do you have any besides your parents? Are there anybody else from your family in the business with you? Yeah. So a few years ago, my sister actually joined the team. Um, okay. It was years of me like being like, hey, I need you to come on the team because you know, no one cares about the family business as much as you and your family. Sure. So it's always great to have someone that cares just as much about it and have like a second pair of eyes on it. Luckily, we get along fantastic. Um, I can't speak to every family business. Right. Working so right. Funny, but we haven't had an issue thus far. Now, have you guys, you know, because of the family dynamics, like, that, like you said earlier, it's like, OK, you know, it's kind of hard when it's like, OK, you go home, you're still talking about business. Um, I think a lot of people um you know like through COVID kind of feel the same thing because they work from home so it's kind of like you never I'm gonna say you never get a break from work um what have you tried to do on your side for I'm gonna say your mental health and everything else to be able to take that break from that I mean we get we as a family get together at least try to get together like every Sunday and have dinner and like we tr I, I personally try and make sure that nobody talks about business okay uh, you, you kind of have to set your boundaries or else you will you will fall into a, a, a deep rabbit hole and it's going to be really tough to get out so for stuff like that i think it's really important to set boundaries and make sure that like you know this is the time we talk about work this is the time that we like hang out with the family and talk about family stuff um 
and of course, you know, it's, it, you set your boundaries and sometimes, you know, you cross your boundaries, but it's, it's, right. it's a work in progress. Right. Now, do you, you know, talk about setting boundaries and stuff like that? I mean, do you guys now in the business have a clear distinction of, you know, this is what you're responsible for, this is what your sister's responsible for, and this is kind of what your parents are doing? So my parents, to be honest, have, have retired probably in the last six months to a okay. year like that. So right now it's more of me and my sister trying to set, me trying to set boundaries between what me and my sister do. Right. Um, she is fantastic with people. People love her. So I'm like, hey, I need you to handle the sales. I need you to handle like the customers and the client uh, facing and I'll take care of more of the back end stuff. Mm -hmm. um, one, I think it's great for her to do that because she, because that's how I started. You learn experience about how to deal with customers and then you go through, you know, issues and whatever. You learn how to deal with tough customers and problems mm -hmm. like that. So I've gone through that stage and now I'm handling more of like how to manage people, how to manage the back end, taking care of the website, stuff like that. And eventually what I'm going to end up doing is moving her into my position and then having someone else go into her position. So she's handed, she's learned the sales part. Now she's learning how to to manage people right and that's kind of where we at now yeah i i think there's definitely a lot to be said from you know starting out and i don't want to say sales is the bottom but it is starting out at the bottom and, and working your way through because i think that you know it truly helps you understand all the components and 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 all the cogs in the wheel because you know if you start out at the top how do you know how something can be done and if something happens and you got to step into that job, if you don't know how to do it, how are you going to do it? I mean, that's right, what it comes down to. I think that's one of the most important things as um, as someone coming into the family business. And from my father's standpoint, too, it's like, OK, I understand you're my son. I understand you're my daughter, whatever. But you need to start at the very bottom to understand how this mechanism, how this how this machine works. Right. Um, that's what I loved about how my parents raised me is like they kind of threw me into it and I learned from the bottom. And now I have so much experience that um, I think a lot of people my age didn't get to experience. Now, now, growing up as a teenager, did you work in the family business at that point also or not really? Uh, I worked. Okay. I got gotcha. you. I, gotcha. I, was, I, was, I was like putting names and stuff into Excel spreadsheets, but that was like during the summer when I didn't have a car and right. couldn't do anything else. So I, you know, I went there for a couple hours a day, but I didn't okay. do real work. Gotcha. I do remember though, I do remember funny story. The first time my parents ever sat me down to sell a diamond, my mom was, my mother was just like, you know, throw you in the deep end and learn how to swim. So I think I was like 15, 16 at the time. And I, my mom's like, hey, I, you you know, we have an engagement ring appointment. I want you to take care of them. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know anything about diamonds. Right. Uh, she's like, no, you know, this is how you read a diamond. This is the color. This is the clarity. You sit down with these people and just, you know, talk to them about the diamond, see what they're interested in. This poor couple was probably, you know, 25, 30, looking to sit with someone who was probably like, right. <laughs> experience. They're sitting across a 15 year old at a, at a desk. And I think they thought they were being like, they were on punked or something. Right. <laughs> I, there's no way I said it. In the engagement appointment, I'm sitting across a kid. Right. Uh, but I, I mean, that's something I've, that will stick with me for the rest of my life. And I think it helped me learn very fast. Um, and I, I mean, I plan on doing the same thing with my kid. I don't worry about the sale. It's more about the experience you get. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, I think that that is something. I mean, you know, and I, I'll say I have, young kids myself and um you know my my 16 year old son i he's around with a lot of the events and stuff that i do and he talks to to the adults and it's like you know and i've had him doing that for years because i think that that makes that that's going to help you develop so much more you know down the road uh you know by doing that and then again you know just to be able to talk and have that that intelligent conversation with somebody and not be afraid um even if you don't know what you're talking about not to be afraid to talk with somebody yeah i mean absolutely i think um especially like what you're doing it's he, he gets to see different personalities different types of people so you learn how to talk differently to different people right uh, i think it's a really important skill to learn at a young age what you know if if knowing what you know now if you had to start all over again with your parents, what would you tell your 10-year-old self and then your 20-year-old self? 
My 10 year old self would say, don't worry about it. Enjoy yourself. Go do whatever you need to do. My 20 year old self, I would tell, I would, I would say, you know, pay attention to everything. Keep your eyes and ears open all the time. Um, there's a lot of lessons to be learned in situations where you're not specifically like sat down and taught a lesson. Like you have to catch the lessons for yourself because I learned a lot of lessons from my father, not necessarily on things he taught me, but things he did, didn't do correctly. Right. So those are a lot of lessons I learned myself. Um, the other thing I'd say my 20 year old self is be patient, be patient. I mean, be hungry, be motivated, but be right. patient. And it comes with time. Um, and then also, you know, like I said in, in the beginning, it's like your your parents have experience. So do listen to them. They understand. I mean, they, they've done, been doing this for 20 years longer than you have. So they do know what they're talking about. Yeah. Now, if, if you had it to do over again for college, would you have done something differently knowing where you are now? I would. And actually, I, I've thought about this before because people are like, oh, well, you're in your family business business you know what was the point of going to college um what i would have done differently is i would have spent more time networking in college than focusing so hard on my studies but that's because i ended up going into my family business you know if you're trying to get right. your mba you know, do something corporate of course pay attention to your studies but for me i would have focused a little bit more on networking because you know i think at the end of the day business is done with people I mean, that's, right. that's what it is. I, I do business with someone when they bring like merchandise. I'm like, I don't need anything, but I end up looking at stuff and buying something because I like you. You're a funny person. Right, right, right. But that's what I'm about, people, I mean, I, just, I do think college is important because it teaches you how to think. It teaches you how to, um, how, how to, you know, have deadlines. Um, but I would have done the way I did it maybe a little bit differently. No, obviously you you have the the experience now of what you've gone through and how you've worked with um you know with your parents you know coming into the business you know and you said hey when I have my kids I'm going to have them you know kind of go through the same thing what differently would you do from what your parents did with you? Hmm, it's a tough question. I know the things I would do, but I don't know what. The the things I would do differently would be um, because I think the way my mother had raised me was like, she would let me make my mistakes. Mm -hmm. She knew what I was doing as a mistake, but she's like, do it, you know, learn from it. Right. Uh, to herself. And I think that's an, an amazing thing that I'm also like, I would want to carry into, you know, raising my own child. It's like, I know what you're doing is a mistake, but just do it because, uh, you know, you're not going to learn otherwise. Right. Anything I would do differently? I mean, I'd, I'd have to circle back to it. I can't think off the top of my head. They were great parents. Yeah, yeah. I did. You know, sometimes it's, it's you know, one of those things where it's, um, you know, hey, my dad made me wait too long to start selling or, or really understand the backside of business. I would rather, you know, as they're coming into it to, to teach them that. I mean, I've talked to some business owners that are you know, that, that are generational like you guys are. And some of them are, are say that it's like, Hey, I wish I would have been harder on, you know, I wish my dad would have been harder on me about stuff. He let me get away with too much. Um, now, that you, now that you say that, I do think of something when I was transitioning from school into, into the, to, to the family business, my mother was always like, go work for somebody, go, go work for somebody before you come to our family business. Yeah. And, you know, my dad, my father didn't really care. He was just like, yeah, come on in. Um, but I would 100% do that. I would 100% make sure that my child works for, if they want to come into the family business, that's fine. Stay in the same industry, but go work for somebody else. Learn how they operate. Learn, you know, the way to manage people. Learn, you know, inventory systems and stuff like that. And then come here. And then you can bring in what you've learned or right. see what we're doing that you can make more efficient. But going into... The family business straight off you know school the the things you know are the things that is the way that the business runs i don't know how other businesses run because i've never worked in other businesses right so there's definitely a lot to be learned when you go work for somebody else and then come back into the family business right right what um what do you see the the business doing differently over the next 10 years than what you guys are currently doing so we are 
currently operating out of one out of one location. Um, what I'm thinking in the next 10 years and what I'm trying to plan towards is opening like three to four locations in different cities, um, okay. whether it's Miami, New York, LA, but keeping it still at a smaller footprint because the larger the footprint gets, the harder it is to maintain quality. And that's one of, you know, I think our, one of, one of the, quali one of the things that we have that separates us from other jewelry stores and businesses is like the, the customer service and the quality we have. So I, I don't want to scale too fast and then lose right. that um that's what my plan is for the next 10 years but right now it's just building the systems and processes that you can kind of copy and paste into another store right uh, i was reading a book or i was actually listening to a book called the email and oh, yeah. it yeah it's a fantastic it was it was extremely eye-opening actually about oh yeah you know, build like this franchise model and like your sops and the processes to open another store um, I think a lot of people in my industry, independent jewelers do open other stores, but they don't have these systems in place. So it's just, right. it's, it's, uh, it's like a tornado of problems just going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that that's something, and, and I've, I've read quite a few of, of Michael Gerber's books. Um, and, you know, it, and that is, I mean, it's kind of, you know, you go back to the, I'm going to say the Ray Crockett days of, of McDonald's and okay, well, how was it? It's like, hey. It's the same way every time. So in your case, it's like, okay, the customer service and how we're going to sell you, you know, a diamond and, and stuff like that, it's going to be done the same way each time. Um, so you're having that same experience because that's what, what all the customers want. They want that experience. That's why they're coming to you. Um, exactly. If you're able to give them that same experience, um, you know, it makes a big difference. And funny enough, actually talking about customer service, my birthday was a couple of days ago. Um, and I, you know, I went to a couple of places, showed my ID, whatever. But when I went to, I had a flight like on the 9th, a couple of days after, Delta was like the only business that I dealt with that wished me a happy belated birthday. I was like, okay, this is the reason oh, why I'm yeah. extra flights. It's, it's little things like that. And they did it at multiple stops. So like that customer service and the way that they train their employees is, you know, people appreciate these little things in this customer service. Right, right. Um, you know, for what advice would you have for other young entrepreneurs that haven't quite gotten into the family business yet, but you know they're they're working their way there? What advice would you have for them? I mean, one, make sure that the family business is what you want to do. Don't just go into it and then just you know not love it or um, you know want to do something else five years down the line. And if that's the case, if the family business is what you want to do, just immerse yourself in the industry. Learn as, as much as you can everywhere. I mean, whatever courses you can sign up for, whatever trade shows you can go to, whatever vendors you can talk to, um, you should always be curious. You should always be curious about your industry and constantly wanting to learn more. Um, even for me, I've been doing it for 10 years, but I'm always, when people ask me, they're like, you're an expert. I'm like, no, I'm still learning. Right. I'm still, I think that's one of the most important things. Um, and I mean, again, like if you're, if you're working with your family, if you're working with your parents, just, you have to learn to be patient um, and, and listen for sure. Right. And understand what you're dealing with. Because I'm personally, I'm very lucky because my parents were um, very easygoing and, you know, they let, they let me make my mistakes and learn from them. But I'm friends with other people who work in their family business and like, it's run like a, like a tyrant, like a dictatorship. And they have a lot of frustration dealing with their parents. Right. So, so are you that understanding with your sister at this point? I, I force her to make mistakes. I want her to learn as much as she can. Um, right. Like a lot of the times they'll ask me like, you know, what should we price this at? You know, someone wants to trade this in, this and that. And they ask me like, what, what should we do? What, what do you think we should price it? I'm like, what do you think we should price it at? What do you right. think the right solution to this, to this problem is? How would you answer this customer? Because if I'm constantly giving you answers, you'll never learn. Right. Well, I agree with that a hundred percent. Um, you know, we've covered a bunch of stuff. I've enjoyed our conversation. What have I not asked you that you wish I had? Um, I'm not quite sure. I can't think of a question. How do you keep your sanity while trying to grow your business? There you go. That that's always a good one. And that the, the you you don't have to be in a, a in a family run business for that one either. I actually um, I was listening to a podcast and it, I think it was. Uh, Naval Ravishan, who said that he's like, it's, you know, it's, it's not becoming successful. It's becoming successful and keeping your sanity. 
Um, and I think it's, it's, it's mental health is a, is, a, is a serious thing. You know, I don't think it's embarrassing to have to talk to somebody about the issues that you have, right. whether it's like problems or just anything that you want to talk about. I think you do need to talk to somebody and not hold it in because one day it's going to explode and, you know, it, there's ways to tame that without, right. without those issues. Right. Right. I agree. Hey, it, it's been great talking to you. Um, I, I, I appreciate you, you know, giving me some time today uh, and talking to us. And, you know, I, I wish you all the luck. Going I appreciate forward. it. Thank you great. Hey, this week, uh, my guest was uh, Rustin Yasavalan, and he's with uh, Masayan Diamonds. And I'll see you guys next week. 49 faces looked to him in triumph. Over the last 12 months, they had each taken turns and promoted his business for a week at a time, driving over $987,342 in revenue. What if you had a network of 50 centers of influence who promoted your business every week for a year? Grab your copy of the number one Amazon best-selling book, The Ultimate Guide to Growing Your Business with a Podcast, at 33% off the Amazon price by going to ultimatepodcastbook.com. Again, that website for 33% off the Amazon price is ultimatepodcastbook.com.